everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I have had a lot of requests from a lot of you asking me about how I do long arming on the quilt. I have had my long arms since 2016. It is a King Quilter Special Edition that I got, Sewing Machines Plus. It has a quilt butler on it. So it does all the computerized stitching for me. I don't have to come up with that because free motion is not my thing. I'm still fairly new at working with the Quilt Butler. This is my 30th quilt that I have put on this. I had some trouble when I first began, but that was due to the frame that I was using. It wasn't due to the machine itself. I've been very pleased with the machine. I haven't had any problems with it. So if you if you peel the layers back, uh, back in the day on the King Quilter Special Edition, it is an old Tin Lizzie. And there is a Tin Lizzie and King Quilter Facebook group and they have been very, very helpful, helpful with anything that I've ever needed. I'm sure there's a lot of ways to do what I'm about to show you, but this is the way that works for me. This is a pattern by Amy Gibson that I got from a Craftsy class back in 2015. This quilt is probably the first one that I made where I was really paying attention to my points and I was really paying attention to uh, pattern and fabric placement and so it was one that I just put on the long arm yesterday and finished. I wanted to feel more comfortable with my long arm quilting process. So yesterday was the first time that, uh, that I was really, ple you know, there wasn't any kind of big snags as you go along because long arming is its own thing. That's another part of the quilting process. I decided to get my own long arm because of the amount of quilts that I do quilt and in the end it definitely is uh, going to pay for itself. So I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, feel free. Um, if you have any criticisms, please make them constructive and kind. <laughs> and constructive criticism is always welcome. Or suggestions of something maybe I could do a little bit better or make something easier. I hope you enjoy this. A lot of you have asked me how I do my setup on the long arm with the quilt butler and I'm getting ready to begin quilting this lovely uh, barn star quilt. It is, uh, I got this from a craftsy class back in 2015. These are Joel Dewberry fabrics. Look at my owls. This is one of the very first quilts that I ever put together from an online class. So. Let me show you guys how I'm going to do this. So I use red snappers. You can tell there everything is loaded like that with a red snapper. And these are red snapper uh, grips. They're okay. Uh, I think I might change them out. I use a zero center tape measure and you can see I didn't get the quilt quite on the center of the leader. Not a problem. I'm just making sure that this is even with that. Okay, and the blue tape is on here just to hold it in place. And then each end has a piece of tape at 36 and a quarter. Let me get this over it. There, now you can tell. That is that is what I see. So each end stops at 36 and a quarter. So the first thing you have to do with the butler is tell it what the dimensions are for quilting. So I like to move my machine to right here. This is for an all over pattern. I move it to right here where it is about a foot. See the quilt foot? It's about one, one quilt foot width outside of the edge and one quilt foot width outside of the top. So I put it right about there and that way I make sure the edges of the pattern are going to cover and I have already basted this down right on the edge okay and this basting will be caught inside of the uh, binding what I have to do it says move your machine to the back left corner of the quilting area and press the plus sign so I'm going to do that and we are at zero zero that's what we want okay now I'm gonna move it to the front right corner and what I normally do is I pull this, I have the light on too, I hope that's, I hope it registers and comes through. I come just outside of it about a foot width, a quilting, not a foot, not 12 inches, but the quilting foot, about a quarter of an inch. And then I back up. 
So I want to get this really at an even number. I'm going to back up to as close to 13 right there. And I'm going to touch the plus sign. When you're using the quilt butler, you really only use this button right here. Uh, you need that to turn your light on and, and if you need to do any manual anything. And then, so we've established the layout. Then you go to your patterns, then you go to edit, and then you go to home. And then you get to going. So I'm going to go to patterns. And I want to choose, it's a bubble, it's a champagne bubble. Just scroll up till I find it right there. So I've already got it picked. I'm going to tell it OK. Now, what I need to do is I need to put this camera on a tripod is what I need to do. OK, so how I do this is I want to completely fill it. So I hit this button up here, which is how many repeats. So I'm going to touch that. And you can still see the pattern box right there. So this is repeat horizontal and this is repeat vertical. So I'm going to hit horizontal and I usually go like where it's one past. Uh, that's going to give me some wiggle room as it resizes within the pattern box. So that's good. And now I want to go to this fourth icon down on this uh, this inner menu right here and this is going to do a smart fill there's a little graduation cap on there and that's the smart fill you want to make sure that your little lock is is engaged there it's unlocked here it's locked and I want to do this so now it has compressed those passes so that they fit within I'm not a fan of cropping because cropping makes multiple starts and stops on each end and that's very tedious. So now I want to go to move and I'm, that's the second button on this inner menu. And here you can move all the way to the top. You can move a bit. You can center it. You can move a bit down and you can go all the way to the bottom. I want to go all the way to the top so it's all the way nudged up there. Now I want to go to this button. It's one, two, three, four, five, six buttons down, and it looks like a green box. It's actually a quilt area box. I like to, regardless of what the quilt length, so let me put this quilt length. I think it's 72. This machine thinks it's 74. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll, let me put 74. I'll tell it OK. But what really matters is the number of passes. I like the number of passes to be a whole number. So if I change number of passes, you can just touch it. If I change it to 9.0, watch what happens. It just nudges it up just a little bit to make it smaller so it can get nine full passes. But I like the look better at eight full passes. There we go. That's fa fabulous. That's going to work out just great in this whole thing. So now that I'm done there, I'm finished. I've edited all I want to. So the way I did it with going just above where the fabric starts and just outside of where the fabric starts, this is going to always cover the edges on the top and on the bottom. Now I go to home and I'm ready to go. So you have to engage the needle, right? I have white thread in the top and my backing is an off-white, so I have an off-white bobbin in. I'm going to hit the green button to go. It says it's going to move to the start of the pattern. So if you look, the crosshairs are out here on the outside. It's going to move to that green dot right there. So I'm going to tell it OK. Watch it. There it goes. So it wants me to pull up the bobbin thread. OK, I'm still just barely outside of that fabric. I'm going to tell it OK, and now it's going to do a lock. Let me pause it so you can watch. There it goes. Now what I normally do is right after I get started I will pause it a little bit and I'm gonna go check my mirror underneath feels good I'm gonna tighten my tension just a quarter of a turn oh that's so 
pretty. It looks great. finished right where I wanted to finish so it has tied itself off already so I'm going to pull it forward and go backwards and do a needle up down so I can pull up my bobbin thread and trim there we go all right so now <clears throat> I need to move the quilt I'm not a fan of the nesting feature I mean I'm sure it works but I haven't figured it out yet so I do like most people say, even if you uh, did not have an automatic nesting feature, what I do is I pull it down to the lowest portion of the quilt uh, where the design comes to the closest to me and put the needle down right there. And then I roll the quilt. I loosen up the belly bar. I'm going to roll it back just a little bit very slowly about right there is good maybe one more there now I'm gonna put tension on the belly bar and put the clip down the lock there I'm going to just make sure that the quilt top feel underneath make sure we don't have any bubbles or ripples that don't belong I've got some wrinkles in this so I'm gonna go ahead and use my I have a Panasonic cord free I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press this out a little bit and go over it and get rid of any threads that I put on there and then I will be back when it's time to base this down so okay I advanced the quilt and I'm gonna pull the needle up and it is time to base down this side. And what I normally do is I come out just a, just right outside the quilt, pull up my thread. This may or may not be the right way to do it. It's just the way I do it. And then I, I lock this. And then I'll come over here and I put about two-thirds of the quilting foot onto the fabric. And then everything else... I, I let it hang off and I just come straight down. And I do this side first because this is where I stop. That's it. I don't use the basting stitch. I mean, I can, but this way I don't have to go back and forth. I'm going to tie off. I don't have to go back and forth in the menu. So. I like to trim my threads as I go. Now I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. So I was stitching up some blue bonnet blocks. The sound on my machine changed significantly and that tells me I'm probably out of bobbin thread. So when that happens, <clears throat> I'm on about the fourth pass now so I expected it because it's going to happen every time I hit thread break. So when you stop the machine, it'll give you a choice to start again or do thread break and I just do thread break and then it says move to where the thread broke and press OK. So what I need to do is figure out where this stopped. And where it ran out was like right here. Okay. So one of the things I really like about this uh, King Quilter Special Edition is that it makes a bobbin 
while it is stitching. So I always have a bobbin ready to go when this happens. Uh, once you tell it you had a thread break, the locks come up off of the machine and off, off the carriage. It allows you to go ahead and move it freely. So I'm going to do that now and bring it over here because I need to replace the bobbin. Now before I started this project I didn't show it but I put a couple of drops of oil in all of the oil reservoirs. I do that before I start every project and uh, made sure everything was ready to go. This is Isocord embroidery thread. My machine loves this. I'm using it top and bottom. I don't, it gives me very little lint. On every bobbin change, I like to check the tension again. I will get a scrap and just do a little bit of checking to see how it looks. You never know. So you always want to test. Check a figure eight. That way you're using every direction. My upper tension's too loose on this bobbin. So I'm going to do about a half turn. I probably need to do about a whole turn is what it looked like. I saw lots of eyelashes on the bottom, so... I'll go about three or four stitches before where it stopped and where it ran out of thread and I'm gonna cut this other extra little piece here there's a green check mark I'm just gonna hit the check mark and it comes up and it says is this where you want to restart and I'm gonna tell it yes pull up the bobbin thread and press OK all right We're up and running. Now I'm going to go under there and give that a look real quick. Oh yeah, that's nice. This is the King Quilter Special Edition and it is on a Phoenix frame. I wanted to show you guys how I'm going to fix this, how I've been fixing this. Remember, I started the uh, green dot at the pattern beginning too far in. I didn't pay attention. Rookie mistake. So how you fix that is I have a uh, quilter's ruler. I'm not using the ruler table underneath it because I'm I'm going to just use the base of the machine. And I've got one and I found where I've pretty much matched the curve so that I can continue that curve. And I just bring the machine to where it's three or four stitches before it started there and I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread right in the stitch line okay and I'm gonna do a uh, tie it off and then all I do is put my ruler base up here and hit the green button and finish it off that's it work great I love playing with rulers too so I think that turned out pretty good Good enough for government work, right? So I'm down here to the last pass, and I have put quilt pins in about every four inches on the bottom here, and I have have smoothed out all the fullness that I can, and um, it, there's not hardly any fullness in this at all, but, you know, that happens. So what I like to do is start near the middle. I will go from one end to the other. I like to put my hand here and give it a little tension. And I'm going to keep, again, I'm, I've got um, I, the edge of the quilting foot just on the batting. 
I walk it behind, my fingers behind, and that kind of keeps any fullness out of the way. This is turning out so pretty, y'all. I can't remember what I did with my binding. I know I got binding with this kit. I'll probably have to go get some. Now when I get down here to the corner, I will go up. until I get to the other piece of basting and then I'm done. Now this side, I'm going to start in the middle again and I have pinned backwards for the direction I'm going, which is fine. I'll just have to stop and make sure that I pull them out. Okay, this looks great. Let's see where we are. I want to show you another cool little trick you can do with this. Your stitching is not restricted within the pattern box. So where I have my needle right now, right here where that is, I'll bring you in a little bit and you can see. If I go to the very top of the pattern, which is right here, I'm going to be into the other row of stitching. So where I want the top of the pattern to be on the quilt is right here. And you can't see that, but I'm going to show you how I do this. So I can go back to regular size. I'm going to go to edit and see how these dots and stuff come up. If I touch the green dot in the middle, it will move the entire pattern. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drag it down to where there so now the crosshair is right at the top of the pattern where I want it go back to home and if I move this this is right off the edge right where I want it this is perfect so you can move this pattern you can move it up off the orange box it, the, the the computer does not restrict you to that. Let me go down to the bottom of the pattern and make sure I'm not going to hit anything. Nope. Everything's all good. All right. That looks great. I'm going to tell it right there. It wants me to pull up the bobbin thread. So I'm all finished with the long arm piece of this and I thought I would show you guys how I trim my quilt. I have um, two of the rotary mats under here end to end. I just lay them out on my long arm table and make my life easy. So, let's see. More batting scraps. Boy, I don't have hardly any of those. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned a little thing or two or maybe uh, got a pointer here or there. So if you would like me to make more of these kinds of videos, let me know. I'll be happy to do that. But uh, for now, I'm going to get back to my quilt chatting and piecing and embroidery and whatnot, okay? We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.